A KD tree, or k-dimensional tree, is a space partitioning data structure that lets us organize data containing k dimensions. It is especially useful for efficiently finding the nearest neighbor of a point on a plane. Imagine we have a set of points on a two-dimensional plane, and we want to find the closest point to a target location. If these points were stored in a simple array, we would need to compare the target to every single point in the list one by one, making a total of n comparisons to find its nearest neighbor. This would be the naive approach, and we can do better. Now, let's look at our set of points again, and ignoring the y value for our set of points for now, let's find the middle point along the x coordinate. Let's split all the points into two groups from this point, those to the left of this midpoint and those to the right. Now, considering the subset of points on the left, let's now find the middle point of this subset along the y coordinate and split all points of this subset to either be above or below this line. You can see we can continue splitting these subsets until we have subsets of one, and of course, we can do the same for the right-hand side. This recursive splitting might seem familiar, and for good reason. If we were to be doing this along a one-dimensional plane, we would just simply have a binary search tree. Building a KD tree for data with K dimensions. At each level of the tree, we split along a different axis. In our example, you can see we've split from the root node on the x-axis, then the next level down, we split on the y-axis, then the x-axis again, finally the y-axis, alternating as we step down. As you can see here, green nodes representing an x-axis split and purple nodes representing y-axis splits. If we are given a set of points in a three-dimensional plane, we would split along the x-axis, then the y-axis, then the z-axis, repeating these three dimensions every three layers. As you could imagine, we could do this for any set of k-dimensional data. Now, let's go back to our 2D plane, and let's choose a point on the plane and find its closest neighbor from our set of points. First, let's find the distance between our point and the root node remembering this as our current closest node. And because our point lays on the left side of this node, we will drop down to the left child node, which splits the left side of the plane horizontally. We now find the distance between our point and this next node, comparing it to our previous shortest distance. This one is shorter, so we will remember it as our current closest node. Now our point lays beneath this line, so stepping down to the next node, we find the distance between our point and this node, again updating the closest node as this is closer. Our point now lays to the right of this node. Looking at the next node to the right, we can see that this node has no children nodes, meaning it is a leaf node and our point is the only thing below this line. So stepping down to this node, we find the distance between our point and this node and compare it to our current closest node. The distance is not shorter, so we don't update the current closest. Now we go back up to the previous node. This is currently our shortest path. I'll draw a circle around our node with the distance to the node being the radius. This will help us visualize what we still need to compare. And we now check if the distance along the x-axis to the current node we're on is shorter than our current shortest path. In this case, it is. So that means there could be a node to the left of this line that is closer to our point than our current closest node. Checking the node on the other side of the line, we compare it to our current shortest path. In this case, it is shorter. So we update our closest node. I will update the circle to help visualize the shortest distance. We still have a few more checks we need to make 
To be sure, we have found the closest node to our point. Checking the distance along the y-axis to the next line up, comparing it to our shortest path, shows us it's further away than our current closest node. This rules out any nodes above this line being closer, so we can skip checking anything above this line. And now, checking the distance along the x-axis to the line splitting from the root node, comparing this to our shortest path shows it's also further than our current closest node. Again, ruling out any nodes to the right of this line. Now that we've either checked or ruled out every node, we have the closest node to our point. Let's review the steps we took using the visualized KD tree. After building the tree, we compared our point to the root node, updating the closest node. Because our x coordinate is less than the root nodes, we step into the left child. Now, comparing the distance to the node, we found that it was closer. So we updated our closest node. Now we're in the second layer. So we need to compare our y coordinate with this node. It's less than the node's y coordinate. So we step into the left child. Again, comparing the distances and we find the node is closer. Updating our closest node. And now we're back to comparing the x coordinate. Ours is greater than the node. So we step into the right child. Again, we can compare the distances. This time, the node is not closer than our current closest. So we don't update our current closest. This node is a leaf node and we cannot go any lower. So we step back up into the previous node, checking if the distance between the two X values of the points are smaller than the current closest distance. In this case, it is. So we need to check any unchecked children of this node. Stepping down into the left child, we compare the distance again, finding it's closer. So we update our closest node. Now we need to step back up out to the next parent node we haven't checked a horizontal or vertical distance for, which is this node on the second layer. We check if the distance between the y values of the points are smaller than our current closest, and it's not. So there is no need to check the remaining child and subtree it makes. Now, finally stepping up to check the distance between the x values from our point to the root node. And again, we find it's greater than our current closest. So there is no need to check the remaining child and subtree it builds. Now you can visually see how we've ruled out the majority of the nodes without directly comparing them. And we have found our closest node to our point. With this tree, you can visually see that finding our closest neighbor with a KD tree is O log N, which is a significant improvement over the naive approach, which will take O N. KD trees are a powerful way to organize and search through multi-dimensional data and can be used for a nearest neighbor search in machine learning, spatial queries in games, or collision detection in multi-dimensional environments, such as in autonomous systems, which require efficient search and retrieval of information within a 3D environment. This versatile data structure will be useful to have in your programming toolkit.